Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Play XCOM Enemy Unknown. So last time, if I remember correctly, I forget exactly which episode was the last last time, but I think we just uh, got through another successful UFO mission, which I guess I can tell by, yeah. Oh yes, absolutely, yeah. We had that one mission where somebody got uh, knocked down but not killed, and uh, we're continuing to pretty much stomp our way through classic Iron Man better than I've ever done before. Which is surprising given the uh, bad start we had. But, let's see here. So there's not really anything we want to sell here, except we have way too many floater corpses. Let's get that, that down to 15 for now. Power sources we may or may not sell. It depends on if we're desperate for money for anything. But for right now, what's our research like? Arc thrower is almost done, and after that we'll be working on... Yeah, beam weapons for sure. Uh, let's go ahead and build... Oh, we can't yet, that's right. So we need... We need to get this area... done for, um... done excavating so that we can make a... alien containment, that's right, over there. I'm gonna start excavating this just so we can start getting stuff done. Yeah, let's just excavate some places. Use, <laughs> fund uh, my excavations with uh, floater corpses. In the meantime, let's scan for activity and see what's going on here. Uh, arc thrower is done. Excellent. So we'll start creating some of those so that we can start capturing enemies. That's important for the story, but it also gives you research credits when you interrogate certain things. We're going to start um, researching beam weapons, even though I could very soon, now that I have arc throwers, potentially get a beam weapons credit from a sectoid, but you know, let's, uh, I need, I need lasers or else I'm going to be in trouble soon. And really, cutting it down from ten days to five days is not a big deal anyway. So we got our workshop up, uh, which is going to mean that next, e next, uh, month we can build a satellite nexus, correct? Twenty-five engineers, fuck. Alright, so we gotta have our eyes out for more engineers from, uh, missions, hopefully. Also... Okay, we have zero satellites available right now. Oh, that's right. I must I made some sort of stupid math error in my or I guess you must just start off with one uplink. That's what I must have been not understanding. Uh but anyway, so we have one more uplink capacity now, but we've already got a satellite building for that. And can I build Oh, yes, okay. And I can build alien containment for 85. All right, I'll definitely just sell a corpse so we can get to that. Another floater corpse. Never heard anybody to lose one of those. I mean, they are necessary for building dodge things for jets, but we don't need that many. So we'll build our alien containment, and then after alien containment is done, then we can start using those arc throwers I just our built. Oh my god, we do have a satellite done before the before the month is over. That's good. How much longer is it before this month is over? Oh, I thought we were toward the end of a month. We're actually at the beginning of a month. Okay, so we'll launch that one more satellite before this month is over, but we got tons of time to think about where that belongs. Uh, these guys want three UFO flight computers. They'll pay me very handsomely for them. How many does it take to build a satellite nexus? Two. Okay, that's fine. I only need two more then. I'm only going to ever build one satellite uh, thing and it's gonna be a long time before we can use flight computers for anything else so yes I will give you some flight computers you will give me a shit ton of money which is great for both of us I imagine that means that maybe we can build another workshop or no I should save this money buy some lasers with it once our beam weapon stuff is done uh, okay so we have a mission here I just wanna check three more days on alien containment that sucks so we're not gonna be able to uh, take any aliens alive this mission, uh, which is probably going to be very difficult anyway in classic mode here, but you know, it's good to good to try at least. So let's see where these are. We got one in Europe, one in Asia, and one in South America. Uh, Europe and Asia are more important to me than South America. What are the rewards for scientists? Four engineers are important. 200 bucks would be really great as well. Um, but South America, as I've said many times, is basically useless to me. And didn't we already, like, lose the ability permanently to have South America? 
No, we didn't. That was Africa. Right. So, Panic is not great in either of those places. So, I'm going to do whichever one gave me 200 bucks. I can't remember. Yeah, Europe. It's probably the best idea. China, it would be good to get uh, stuff, uh, get Panic down in China, but very difficult mission and only getting four scientists out of it, it's a bad deal. Though I would also like to get satellite coverage over Europe because I've already started it. But now, nah, if I had beam weapons, I might go for the China mission. But the reward, like scientists, are functionally useless to me. They just speed up research a little bit, and as as you've seen, I can research stuff way quicker than I can actually afford to use it. Uh, and the two hundred dollars is going to help me a lot. Keeping panic down in Europe is good. If we have to sacrifice Asia, that's probably the next most useless one. Oh man, we still have a lot of people injured as well, which is not good at all. So we're gonna have a ton of rookies with us, but hey, maybe some of these rookies will uh, level up. That's another good reason to not take the very hard mission. Uh, we're definitely... is our sniper? Yes, Wesley Snipes is with us. So let's add a scope to him. We're not gonna take any arc throwers with us, obviously. We still have one support with three medkit uses. That's great. Um, now the question is, do I keep all of my rookies with frag grenades, or do I give some of them, um, you know, the other thing, uh, a medkit, or give one of them a medkit? You know what, I think it's a good idea to give one rookie a medkit just in case um, my support goes down and needs a medkit to be stabilized, because that would be heartbreaking if he died because he has all the medkits on him, so hopefully Jiang can hold on to his medkit. Oh, this guy's not named yet. Schmidt is not a good assault name. Let's go ahead and customize him. Make his last name... Uh... I don't know, I'm running out of silly little puns, or even, like, not even puns. Just... And... And... Pepper. He's Assault and Pepper. Okay, let's change his first name as well. Assault and Pepper. That is probably the silliest thing that I've ever put on camera. No, that's not true. I've done a lot of silly things on camera. Uh, but anyway, I think that's a good loadout. Let's go and take care of this mission. Shouldn't be too difficult, but with three rookies, you never know. Sometimes the, uh, deployment site is in the, UK. the difficulty ratings are kind of misleading. I've had very difficult missions many times that I just plow through because they weren't actually that difficult. This is a map that I don't like. It brings back bad memories. The first time I ever saw a cyber disc was on this map, and it was not beneficial for me. I really it was also the first time I ever had a unit throw a grenade at somebody. So I wasn't see I didn't see that coming at all, so I had all my people together. Uh let's go ahead and run this guy up here. It's all it's just a pain to get started on this map because there's so little cover out here for anybody. So uh, we'll send somebody out here, I guess. And then... Man, this is tough. I don't want to move my sniper yet. Uh, you know what I could do? Let's move my sniper here, and let's throw a battle scanner to see if there's anything I need to worry about in this room here. So we can show off that ability. We have two, so it's not too much of a hassle to waste one so early. Doesn't look like there is anything in there. Which is handy to know, because now we don't have to tiptoe around it so much. Though, you see these gray spots where it can't see through objects, so there could be something hiding in this corner pretty easily. And now that I think about it, that's actually pretty likely. So, might not have been a wholly useful uh, use of a battle scanner. Right, we're just going to have to spread people out without, or without uh, cover here. So there's no way around it, unfortunately. But let's get people around stuff, and then soon we'll be able to start advancing on that building a little bit. In the meantime, everybody overwatch. What do we got? Any sound? I hear thin men and floaters. Let's send somebody over this way. Yeah, that's what I figured. Of course, they were hiding right behind that fucking kiosk or whatever the hell that is. Shop display, I guess. Um, 
Alright, let's hold off on that guy because we might have him do a run and gun. Or we might have him throw a grenade. What kind of grenade throws does this dude have? Because he could destroy some cover here and that could be very useful. We could leave this floater out to dry essentially by um, destroying his cover and hurting him substantially. But let's see if that's necessary. First off, does my sniper have a shot? Yes. 54 to hit on the other one, the one I don't want a grenade, so that's good. Please hit. I gave you a scope, right? I think I must have, because 54 is pretty high for that shot. That was a very lucky hit. So yeah, we might not even need to use the grenade, because with only one floater left, uh, what might be smart, actually, that's really as far as you can dash. You gotta be kidding me. Uh, but I could put him over here, and then that should count as a flank. Why don't we do that? I'm a little bit nervous about it, because what if we see some more aliens? God damn it. They're sectoids, though. That doesn't even fucking figure into my equation. It should, because they can still do some damage, but... Yeah, and they decided to go the safe route, which is probably a good idea for them, but it's also pretty beneficial for me. So let's go ahead and use a rapid fire on this guy. Unfortunately missed one, but he died anyway. So that's just fine. And now we start worrying about these sectoids, and that should be no problem. So we'll move somebody up this way. Take a shot. 56. Could kill it right here. Not necessarily likely, but possible. Hey, there we go. I'm surprised we're doing so well with uh, conventional weapons. Because I really do feel like I would like to get beam weapons as soon as possible. That Once we get lasers on these guys, it's going to be a whole new game. I think we're going to be doing a lot better. Uh, let's go ahead and move some people up. And do another round of overwatches. There should be a sectoid attempting to breach that door pretty soon, I would expect. I don't think he's just going to sit over there now that his comrade is gone. Or not. Okay, so we're going to use this turn to reload people who need to reload. And overwatch most people and also get these rookies up into a position where they could be useful in the future. Should be careful about moving people after I've already told so many people to overwatch, but it's fine. It's not the best play possible, but I think it will work out. And let's just have the sniper reload on this turn. Let's see if that sectoid tries to run through the door like I expect him to. We hear sound from, I suppose, probably on the other side of this building. I bet there's floaters hiding out here in the alleyway. And usually there's also some sectoids or something hanging out over here as well. So I think a sectoid like broke into this room. This room is where I saw my first cyber disc. And the cyber disc, like, I had all my dudes like hanging out in here, like hiding behind this thing, and something blew up this whole wall. And I was like, oh fuck. And then a cyber disc threw a grenade and destroyed all of the cover and killed a couple of people. It was terrible. I think that's how I lost maybe my first ever XCOM campaign. Alright, so what do we want to do here? I'm thinking we want to break out through these two doors at the same time. Which is going to mean we're going to want to move through this room first. As you can see, the battle scanner is gone. It only lasts for a few turns, but that's never been a problem for me. Oh, we just heard some more sound. That's unusual. In the middle of my turn. Um... This guy is probably going to loop around this way, but I don't want to do it yet. We're going to have him wait. Um, these guys just need to get into this building. Seems pretty safe right now, so I don't feel too bad about dashing these guys into positions of cover in the building. Because I don't think we're going to encounter anything, and if we do, it probably is only going to be that one sectoid who these two people who are already in here and good at Overwatch are going to take care of no problem. I should also get my sniper into a better position, like maybe... This is tough. Again, snipers are... their strong suit is certainly not dealing with uh, building combat, but we'll move them up here for now. And set everybody else on overwatch. But so far nothing at all has gone wrong in this mission. I'm just being cautious. Oh yeah, good try. What was he thinking? Alright, so that's the end of that. And we do hear some floaters, but yeah, I want to get everybody out to this side of the building, see if there's anything out there, and then breach this 
building right here. A sectoid ran in there earlier, but I think that's the one we must have just killed. So he like left the building again. Uh, let's go ahead and see if we can see anything with this guy. No, we cannot. So we're going to see if we can see anything with this guy. Nope. And we're going to start running people over next to this door then. And uh, next turn we'll be in a great position to pop that open. And our sniper, again, I'm a little bit iffy on where to place him. I think we're going to move him up here this turn, and then next turn we can put him behind one of those dumpsters, assuming it's safe for him. And is that everybody? No. This guy... You can go hang out with these guys over here, and you can all deal with whatever threat you find when you open that door, assuming there is one. And hopefully nothing's about to run through that door. I don't... I can't imagine that being the case, but... That would be pretty scary. I think somebody over there might actually have lightning reflexes. But okay, so first off, open that door. What do we got? Nothing at all, okay. So now we start moving people. Like I said, Sniper is going to take a position behind this dumpster. And uh, this guy can just kind of hide with him back here. This guy can run over here. We found some floaters, alright. I'm surprised you can see into that building, like, through that brick structure. Uh, let's see here. We got a 54% chance to hit. What about a grenade? Nothing at all. We could probably blow up this wall, which might be advantageous. But I don't think that's necessary right now. We could also... It's only two floaters. If we get... Both of these guys have grenades. Oh, no, they don't. But we do have two people with grenades. So if we could get two grenades in there, those things would just die. Uh, but I don't think that's really the best way to play this. I want to put somebody... Let's put these guys all around this wall. Yeah, it's only floaters, so I don't feel too scared about engaging them here. So we're going to try two 56s on this guy. That should kill him, and then we'll have an overwatch on... Oh wow, it only took us one guy, so we've got two overwatches here now. Which should make it very difficult for that other floater if he wants to get into position. We are going to just dash this guy, because we need to get people over there to help, if at all possible. And same deal with this man right here. Wow, he can dash a long ass way. Um, let's go. There's nothing over here with grenades, so I don't feel too bad about putting these guys in a big cluster by the door and just having them ready to attack next turn. Um, no matter what that floater does, he should be pretty screwed pretty soon. So I'm going to put this guy on overwatch with his pistol in case something tries to come outside. I can't really think of a more useful thing to do with the sniper right now. I know I've been talking up the sniper class a lot, and they are very useful, but they, I will admit they're very situational as well. This guy, I'm really surprised he didn't trigger a second overwatch, but he's probably going to shoot at somebody, hopefully not kill them. Shouldn't kill him. Yep. And that is going to be the end of his life. It was a necessary sacrifice. I was hoping an overwatch would kill him, but since the overwatch did not manage that, there wasn't a lot we could do. That's the end of him. Is that the end of the mission? Wow, that was super easy. Like I said, early game is the hardest part of XCOM by a fair margin. Uh, Panic in China is to be expected. We'll probably use a satellite to... Um, what's the... I don't know. To apply a salve to that. There's some word that makes more sense there, but I can't think of it. Uh, we got a new other support. Are you kidding me? And another sniper. That's great, actually. I like having two snipers on my squad. So... We got just a tiny bit of stuff there, nothing really huge, but $200 is huge. That's a lot of money. With that, we can build another workshop, I think is a smart decision. It's going to take $130, and will make everything cheaper for us. I could also build a foundry, but I don't feel like... Well, let's look at, uh, quickly, Officer Training School. What can I buy there? Rapid Recovery is not too important to me. I want Iron Will as soon as possible, but we need a major for that. Don't Die on Me is also big. So as our squad members get higher levels, we can get more of that. For right now, uh, do I really want to waste money, on, or not waste money, but invest money in a workshop right now, or the better things I could do. 
How much power do we still have? Ten more power. Satellite Nexus. It's gonna require eight of it. So if we build a workshop, we would need another power generator before we deal with uh, building the satellite nexus. And I want a satellite up nexus up next month. No question. So let's hold off. Let's save the power for right now. And we can use all of this money for some useful stuff as far as buying beam weapons for my troops. And we have a council mission already. That was really fast after my last one. Five engineers is huge. That completely negates why I was wanting to uh, build that workshop, so that's great. Let's uh, do it. 129 bucks is great. And this is going to be uh, an ex escort mission, which are also fairly easy. I tend to find that uh, council missions are easier than your average. Um... Jiang now has the med kit, which is not what we want right now. I'm going to buy him a scope because I like to have two snipers in my squad anyway, so even though this guy is pretty new, new and might find himself dead, I'm still going to build him a scope, and he can have that. And if not, we'll just, you know, save it for the next sniper, wipe off the blood. Let's go ahead and also name this guy. Customize. Last name is going to be... Um, trying to think of like synonyms for accuracy that Northern Lion hasn't used in his playthrough. Not very easy. Um, headshot. His last name is Headshot. It's uh, it's Welsh. All right, and oh, of course, give him the fucking scope. Don't make the same mistake as he did last time. You got a scope. Do we? We still have a good support with a medkit and as per usual we'll also give a rookie a medkit just in case something terrible happens to him. Is our alien containment up? Two days remaining, come on! Alright. That really sucks. Yeah, This was like unbelievably quick after my last mission. But that's fine. I think we'll be fine. It's, I just, it would just be an easy opportunity to maybe get a, uh, a thin man or a sectoid captured. So this is another example of an episode that went too long, it was about an hour, and cannot be rendered in one chunk by Camtasia. Just like the last episode, I apologize for this. I think this is going to be the last episode that that ever happened in. Now that I'm aware of it, I can be more cognizant of like, is there a chance this episode is going to go over an hour? And just cut it. Um, but yeah, in the meantime, this is another cut. Again, the second half will be up in probably an hour, hour and a half after this first half. There's also going to be an Isaac coming today. Sorry for the inconvenience. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys next time.